So today we're going to be building this completely offline Bitcoin Lightning Network vending machine, LNURL Vend. It uses a protocol called LNURL, um, which is the, the thing which allows us to send and receive uh, an encrypted and then a decrypted pin as the pair so I can verify payment. Um, it's also a sleep, you goes to sleep after a little while to save on battery if you're in on battery like I am here. And once he's woken up, I can select a product like this chocolate bar. I can pay a LNURL pay which it generates, 56 sats, yes please I'll pay that. And then once I've made the payment I'll get a receipt and then I input the pin, 6, 8, and then it dispenses the product. As always you can check out the repo um, at my GitHub on ARCBTC and this is LNURL Vend. Uh, it's got all the, the code here for the um, Arduino IDE, which we're going to be using a little bit later on. It's got the libraries packaged in as well. Um, I don't go into too many too much detail about how it works and the principles behind it, because that's kind of covered in the LOU, LNURL POS repo. So if you want to learn more about how it works, if you go there, um, it explains uh, that you know the POS or the vending machine in our case can be offline because the uh, payer is online on their uh, phone um, and by using this LN URL uh, we can pass an encrypted pin to the payer who's then going to do a request to a server and pass that encrypted pin to the server once the payment has been made it then gets sent back to the payer from the server as a de as the decrypted pin uh, in the receipt of the payment there's a little bit more information about LN URL here how it's basically just a URL, yeah, which we can add that encrypted pin to, and the URL is encoded using Batch32 to get the LNURL string, which our wallet can then recognize in QR code form as an LNURL. So if you want to learn more about it, then you know go check the LNURL POS um, site out. If uh, oh yeah, we've also we'll also have the video tutorial things uh, there and some information on the hardware, some pictures which are always helpful, and a list. Um, you can use this project with more or less any vending machine which has these motors, uh, these very generic three pin motors with the coil which are used in a lot of vending machines. However, I really like this vending machine. Um, it's got a nice form factor. You can buy them from a company called Bessone on Alibaba, but you have to get them in bulk. Um, uh, and you also need to kind of go through the Alibaba process, which is where you have to contact the supplier and things. But there's some videos in there, and uh, it also has a different colored vending machines too. And some videos on, you know, which will show you the build quality. It's got a really nice build quality. It's a metal case with kind of a glass frontage. Uh, but I asked them very nicely, and they've added this product to their AliExpress shop. So now you can order it directly from AliExpress. The only issue is you'll pay a little bit more for being able to order just a single one from AliExpress because AliExpress put a fee on top of um, the product price. Uh, but we do have a uh, promo code, which if you put in, you'll save yourself 35 pounds or 45 uh, USD. And that promo code is in the uh, repo. So use this to save a little bit of money um, when you get that uh, to get that vending machine if you're going to replicate the vending machine which I've got it'll fit inside uh, hand luggage so I can take it on the plane with me when I go to somewhere like a Bitcoin conference for example we have the pin maps for the different components and we have this schematic which I've made it looks a bit messy and spaghetti-ish but I, I honestly try to make it as clear as possible um, as well as this video tutorial, I would use this as your primary source for when you're wiring up your vending machine. Um, just follow each one of these lines with your jumper cables and you should be good to go. I've got a bit of information down here on installing the Arduino ID, but we're going to go into that in more detail in a moment. So uh, that is it. Uh, we'll get on with making the vending machine now, shall we? I wanted this vending machine to be able to go anywhere and run off battery. Using the battery in the vending machine is going to be a little bit of a tight squeeze. As well as that, you also need a connector going from the positive and minus from the battery, um, which will then go to a barrel plug, which you can plug into the vending machine plug. Uh, a plug does come with the vending machine, but I want to keep that. Luckily, I had another 12-volt uh, plug lying around I could use, uh, but if you don't, you'll have to order one of those as well. 
as well as the SP32 microcontroller, it needed a bank of four 5 volt DC relays, three for turning on the dispensers, the vending machine motors, and one for managing the lights of the vending machine itself. Uh, relays are just switches which you can turn off um, electronically by from the microcontroller. I also used another relay as the ESP microcontroller will go to sleep after 60 seconds of power um, and this relay can be used to turn off the TFT screen and also the, the bank of four relays which is actually plugged into the um, vending machine. By using a breadboard there's a lot less soldering although a little bit of soldering is required. Um, if you've never soldered before don't be scared it's it's easy there's plenty of tutorials online and soldering iron is only cost you about you know 20 quid so it's well worth learning how to do it now's the time to learn. Because the SP32 doesn't uh, fit quite annoyingly on regular standard breadboards, I used two breadboards, but then uh, I had to cut one of the breadboards down. You might be able to find a wider breadboard which fits the SP32. We'll get power for the SP32 directly from a 12 volt battery using a step down converter. We're using a very cheap TFT 1.4 inch screen. For inputting our selection and then also our pin, we've got a membrane keypad. These are very cheap at like 30p each and uh, we'll also need a load of jumper wires. I needed to cut a little hole for the keypad membrane to thread through to the outside of the vending machine. In this case I used a angle grinder with a very thin angle grinding disc. Again, don't be scared of trying to use an angle grinder if you've not used one before. Just buy one, they're about 20 quid to buy um, and they're an extremely useful tool to have lying around. Just wear, uh, make sure you wear protective goggles when you use it. But yeah, they're, they're a really useful tool and if you haven't used one before, now's the time to use one. The vending machine comes with an aerial, obviously we're not going to use that because our vending machine is completely offline. The keypad will use pins 12 to 32, however the last pin for the keypad is actually going to go to ground. So that's the row for A, B, C, D. That means that when our ESP32 goes to sleep we can then use those buttons to wake our ESP32 up. On the TFT screen they usually have the same labelled pins, um, a CS which is a chip select and that goes to GPIO5. Reset goes to GPIO 16, AO, DC on my particular TFT screen is called PO for some reason. Uh, it goes to GPIO 17. The SDA or the MOSI, that's like the data um, pin that goes to GPIO 23. And then the SCK, which is the clock pin that goes to pin 18. The LED pin can go to the five volt switch on the relay as well as the power for the screen itself. This way we can turn the relay on and off, which will turn the screen on and off. Now we need to connect the bank of relays to the 12 volt power source for our motors. Now I'll warn you, the motors um, going to the vending machine are uh, the black wires, is, is what I think is the live wire, and the, the red wire is the, is the ground wire. Maybe the motors have been mounted backwards or something, but, but for some reason you know, the motors don't turn on or don't turn in the right direction unless you um, connect the live wire from the 12 volt feed to the black wire of the motor and then the, the ground wire from the 12 volt feed to the red wire of the motors. Now we're able to use that fourth uh, relay on our bank of relays for turning the LEDs on and then also for disabling the motors and, and allowing power to get to the motors as well of the vending machine which means that when the ESP32 is asleep, there's absolutely no way that the motors can, can be turned on. Rather than me try and show you the bank of four relays and how it's wired in the video, because it all gets a bit messy with these jump cables, it's a lot easier if you go take a look at the uh, schematic diagram on the repo, and you'll be able to see there how the light wires are laid out nice and easily. Basically, the um, a 12 volt uh, live wire is taken from the fourth relay back to the first, the second socket in the first um, and then uh, it's then looped to the next uh, second socket and then the next second socket on the on the next relay uh, and that means each one of those relays can have like live power come in when it's switched on and then the other wire which is on the third socket of each relay is then going to each one uh, it's a signal wire going to each of the motors in the vending machine um, so when I cut the wires uh, a moment ago you would have seen there was one connector which had three wires going into it. They're the three different signal wires which are going to the motors in the vending machine. Now we connect our trigger pins. So 15, 2 and 4 to the trigger pins of the three relays. GPIO 3 
uh, labelled as RX on the board will be for our fourth relay and this is what we're going to use to turn our LED lights on and the motors. And that's it, the hardware's all set up. Um, I probably missed something so do make sure that you go through that schematic and really plan what you're going to do. Uh, but just look at the schematic on the repo and follow where all the wires are and you should be good to go. Download the entire repo for LNURL Vend and then the main file which we're going to be using is the LNURL Vend.ino. This is an Arduino IDE file which you can open up with the Arduino IDE. There's details on how to install that at the bottom of the repo. Just follow these instructions you know, precisely because it'll um, tell you how to install the SP32 boards as well which you'll need to do. Also you may have to copy the libraries so you know, when you download this folder and then run it uh, in the Arduino IDE, Arduino might find the libraries in this libraries folder however if it doesn't you may have to put them in the core folder of your Arduino install. Now the goofy way in which I find my um, core folder, because I always forget where it is, is I open up an example like Blink and then I go to sketch, show sketch folder, here we go and then I just delete this bit here and then there you can see that's my core libraries folder so you can just literally copy and paste the libraries from the repo into that or if you want you can you know find those libraries and install them yourself uh, you will have to change CFT ESPI to work with the ST7735. That's a Googleable experience. So if you if you have to, if you go that route, then then do that. Um, yeah. So install the Arduino IDE. Follow the instructions. Uh, oh, this is wrong. That you should be selecting the um, ESP32 Dev module. So I'll change that on there. Um, Oh yeah, I'll plug in the SP32 because this is I took these instructions from the LNURL POS repo, hence why there's, there's still that thing in there I need to change. Um, right, so let's have a look through the code, shall we? So we declare our what we call our libraries at the top here. Uh, don't need that. I need to delete that. Um, and then this is the bit of code which we need to change. Uh, this is generated on server side on LN bits. So if we have our LN bits wallet. And then we go to um, LNURL POS extension. You can generate a new POS instance. And then when you do that, you get this little button here, which we can press and it will create the code for us to uh, give the vending machine our point of sale details, which are stored on the LNBit server. So we can have that shared secret to encrypt and decrypt our secret pin. So I'm going to paste that across to there. Then you just you know change these products. These are the products which are listed in your vending machine. I've only got three because obviously the vending machine I'm using only has three products. But if you're using more relays than and more products, then you'll have to add these um, manually. I'll, I'll work out a way of doing that easier later. But for now, we've only got three products. Uh, this is denominated in our fiat currency. So this is USD. So this is eight cents. Uh, sorry, eighty cents for this um, product for the CSP32, which is an absolute bargain. Um, and that's actually all you need to change, to be honest, if you if you, all your hardware is plugged in properly, as per the instructions. Um, right, let's have a look down here. So we declare, there's some variables here which we're declaring, some strings and stuff, and then there's a bunch of fonts uh, to make um, rendering the fonts a little bit less ugly. Uh, this is our keypad bit, where we're, you know, we're calling this keypad library and then in the keypad library we're able to define the different pins which those that keypad matrix membrane relates to um, and then we start our we set up our project um, so we begin our serial and then uh, we are making these pins here output pins um, so basically an output pin is a, a gpio pin on the sp32 which you can set to high or low so a one or a zero it's just a switch basically so uh, these are the pins which um, uh, we are sending a signal to to turn on our relays. So we turn them into output pins. Then we turn them, when we turn them on high, the relay turns on. So you know this little switch here turns on, and when we set it to low, it turns off. Okay, this is our main loop. Um, I guess here's a few crumbs here, which uh, me debugging. I think at some point I left those in there, so I'll have to delete those. Um, first thing we do is we wake up the screen. So uh, if we go down, so this is our main loop here, so this loop will just run um, again and again, you know, repeatedly when we turn on our vending machine. Uh, and then we have 
under there we have a bunch of functions each doing different things like showing the QR code and yeah waking up the screen this is the function we're just looking at here isn't it so digital write 22 high and digital write 3 high pin 3 high and then TFT begins set rotation display the logo so basically when we wake up the screen we want it to show the logo and we want to uh, when the screen wakes up after the screen's woken up, sorry, and after the SP32 is woken up, we want to turn these relays on and turn the LEDs on inside the actual vending machine itself. Okay, um, so that's our first little function which we run, and then once we've run that, we do a bunch of things. So this is our select product screen. Let's have a look at the select product screen. Here we go. Um, this is where I suppose if you're adding more. Um, products and more relays you'll have to connect it to more GPIOs and set more GPIOs to outputs and then also add them at the top and then you would need to add those products here as well so I guess um, yeah this here this chunk here if you copied this and then pasted it and then made product four, you could do that but again you know for now we're just keeping it three because our vending machine only has three products um, and that's really just visual stuff it's not doing anything else than just displaying something on the screen because once it's displayed that thing on the screen for select product it goes into this while loop so basically while this thing's false this is just gonna loop around okay uh, getting waiting for someone to press a key right once you've pressed a key if it's a one or two or three or a star star just resets it um, say if we press a one then it sets this thing to true so it's going to break this loop isn't it um, and then it's we're going to take that virtual key of two I suppose yeah two and we're going to put that into selection and then we're going to set the amount as uh, the product amount times 100 because later on when it goes to the other side to server side it then divides it by 100 to to get back to that original fiat amount for the product um, there is also another if so it's just checking and it's making sure that you know after 30 seconds the, the vending machine will go to sleep I think I might change this to a couple of minutes because uh, 30 seconds is a little bit too short a time but yeah so in this while loop while it's waiting for you to press a key initially press a key if uh, if you wait too long it'll just go to sleep okay anyway however if you do manage to break that while loop by selecting a product then you will go and make an LN URL so let's have a look at the make LN URL function which is way down here somewhere here we go so as you can see we're creating that random pin then we're doing some crazy crypto stuff to in encrypt that random pin using our secret this lovely bit of handwritten crypto was made by Stepan Snigrev uh, of Spectre Wallet so there's there's someone you can trust for being able to come up with some nice tidy crypto which is great thank you very much Stepan um, and it's great to be able to use it in another project as well um, so that's make the LN URL and then I think after it makes the LN URL it then displays the LN URL or is it just is this displaying it as well all right yeah it's going to make the QR code isn't it show QR code that's this one here isn't it so it's going to um, literally draw little black and white rectangles uh, on the screen to make that um, QR code which you can scan and at the bottom it says pay and enter pin from receipt if you're debugging and uh, you want to just know what the pin is without having to pay every time right here you could write plus uh, what's that random pin thing called blah and then you're out payload once amount random pin yeah plus random pin yeah 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 because we declared random pin at the top it'll hold that variable in its memory so we can cross function it so if we put that there um, actually because it's a pin so it's a number you will need to cast that as a string so what this basically means is um, if you're debugging and you don't have to keep making payments to uh, get the pin number from the Elabit server um, if you run this then when it's where it says pay to enter pin from a seat it will also then display the pin on the screen as well so you can just input the pin to see whether the uh, motors are running okay so we're going to get rid of that because we know it's working then what do we do uh, we show QR code and then again we're waiting for a key to be pressed aren't we um, so when the key is pressed uh, we're basically saying if um, blah, 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 blah. okay here we are 
if the random pin, if the amount what what you enter ends up being the random pin, then run this thing here. Then it's saying if that selection, which we cast up here, there we go, is say it's one for example, if the selection equals one, then pin fifteen set that to high. So that's like you know hopefully that relay there, and that'll turn that motor on there for two and a half seconds, which is the time it takes to do a full rotation for the product to fall out. Then it sets that pin to low. And then again, we're, you know, we're using this uh, for, the, for our while loop, for this to run repeatedly, we're using this function, this um, bool here. So we're gonna set that to true, which is gonna break that, and then we're gonna pop out of that. Um, I think it here we have, if someone enters a pin more than four times, uh, or more than three times, sorry, and it's wrong every time, then, um, actually no, sorry, here is if they uh, enter a wrong pin, it will display wrong pin, um, and then add one to this counter, but if this counter gets too high, it will say too many attempts, and then it will set that thing to true, which then breaks that while loop, and then the whole thing will just start up again. And that's our main loop, so that's our program right there. Um, and the only way you know you can enter that right pin is if you make the payment and then get that right pin from the server. Uh, and uh, and that's it. There's there's really nothing else to it. All you need to do is plug in the ESP32 to the computer, select um, the port in which it's plugged into, and make sure ESP32 dev module is selected, and then uh, click on this thing here, upload, and it should upload. Et voila, it works. Everything seems to be working well. Uh, the only thing they have to do is stuff all those components into the vending machine and put the um, the keypad on the outside with the ribbon going through the little hole I cut and plug it into the ESP32. Uh, something I did modify is I added an extra length of leads to the keypad and to the screen so I could actually open my vending machine to put products in it. Otherwise, the, the wires would, would you know make the gap for the door a little bit too small. Um, and that's it, it works.